Good morning. Right, got a nice fun project today. Um, it's incredibly windy. It's incredibly sunny, so I've, I've sort of found a little shady spot in the garden. So I hope the camera behaves itself. Um, right, so this is a very heavy old stone planter that I've had for years and years. Uh, that's the base, and then this sits on top of that. I managed to get it from its position to into the shade here, um, but I can't physically lift this. Um, I brought it on a wheelie trolley. I can't lift it back onto there. Anyway, um, today um, I'm going to talk about what's gone wrong with this planter. Um, so a couple of years ago, my sister and I went to a lovely garden centre and we bought um, lots of beautiful little alpines um, and I kept all the labels so I've got some ericium there, some iris chicken little, some viola, labradorica and um, some well something called dragon's eye, I can't even pronounce that. Um, spent a lot of money um, on little plants. There's another one, Armeria. They were all sort of miniature plants. Um, and I planted them up and it was beautiful. And then last year, it looked like this. So there is a little plant right in the middle there with very pretty leaves. And I think that is the viola because I've kept the label and those leaves look the same as that. But then we've got loads of weeds, loads of grass, something there that's self-seeded. I've got a little miniature iris, I recognise that. Now that's going to be the chicken little. Um, so I think I might keep a little patch in the middle of the viola and I'll keep that iris. But everything else, it seems to have been taken over by this plant. Now I think, is that part of that viola? I don't know. Anyway, it's just been swamped by it. Right, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to empty this all out into there. I'm going to keep the iris and I'm going to keep the little bit viola. And then I've trapped myself to this punnet of Semper Vivens or house leaks um, and the whole punnet was £5.99. Um, I think I paid more for one of these than that. I think they were about £6.50 each. But anyway, they were lovely. Um, right, so um, I was thinking, um, because this stone planter from what I remember is very shallow around the outside and then it has a little bit of depth in the middle, but not a lot. Um, and house leeks are going to be fine with that. But just in case I've got enough room to squash them in, I've, I bought a lot of these um, a few years ago as well. Uh, that's another trait of mine. If I like a plant, I tend to buy lots of them. I can't remember what this one's called, so I've had a look on my Seek app. It says it's a didcot from the Stonewall family. So to me, he just looks like the kind of succulent that you get. He's got a lovely little red tinge to the end of, edge of his leaves. So I was thinking he might go in the middle and they might go around the outside. But um, anybody who knows me knows I have no spatial awareness. So it could be that I can only fit these in and, and that will be great. So I meant to do this um, last year and then the year just seemed to get away from me. I don't know, oh, crumbs. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's easy. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> right. So I'll just stick him there for a minute. That was a lot quicker than I thought. Right. So if you've seen any of my other videos, particularly the ones where I'm preparing for my new greenhouse in the back garden, um, I'll put a link to the video. You'll know that this is the soil um, 
from the bit of back on where I'm going to stand the greenhouse and it's lovely crumbly sandy soil um, so I've got quite a lot there and what I'm going to add to it is this some of this horticultural grit um, it's, it's really reasonable I think the whole bag was sort of three pound or something and then I'm just gonna mix that in so it's nice and free draining because I do know that house leeks hate their feet in the wet um, and had I known then what I know now um, I would have probably brought brought this under cover for the winter maybe stuck it in the garage or something um, and then those little plants would probably have survived but um, I don't know if you're the same but anything that's really heavy like this it puts you off before you start you sort of think oh can't be bothered to, to move that oh it'll be fine and then it isn't um, but I, what I thought next well this year once the greenhouse is up and running um, I love going to um, Harlow Car, the RHS garden, Harlow Car down in Harrogate and they have a beautiful alpine house um, and I thought right I'll, I'll have a little corner of the greenhouse just for alpines and then I'll put, I'll put this in there over the winter. Because I'm pretty sure if I left them out in a northeast winter, um, they wouldn't survive. Move my sunglasses out the way there. So that's nice and gritty. Oh, I'm going to empty that in. I want to um, top dress it with cockle stone. I think that looks really pretty and um, it keeps the water from um, evaporating too quickly but also it blocks the light so you don't get as many weeds right okay so that looks good right so what I think I'll do is I'll position these ones around the outside. Oh, let's see. Got a nice little root system there. And what you do with house leeks is when you buy them, try and get them with lots of, of little chicks like that. And all you do is you take them off, pop them there, and you get another house leak coming off them. So you can sort of, you get more for your money. There we go. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to take some of them off and sort of spread them around. Spread them out a bit. Like that. I like the contrast in colour and these will just root no problem. That there, like that. Actually I'm going to move the camera so that you can see what I'm doing here. Right, I hope that's a better angle for you. And they're really tough these little plants. I'm just going to encourage the roots to go out on that one but look at all these little chicks around the outside right. whether to put him in the middle first I think I might right. I'm quite excited about this He gonna fit in there, yeah? Mm. 
when I bought come on out doesn't want to come out this one when I bought these little plants they were all just in little tiny pots oh, crumbs come on use this gardening tool out you come Oh, there we go. Right. I'll just put him there. It was a bit traumatic for him, wasn't it? That's it. Give him a bit more depth. That's it. I want him to be sort of level. Oh, he's very pretty. And then this one here, I'm going to take some of these little chicks off the side because they're just, um, they're too congested, really. It'll do it good. I have lots of um, house leaks in my conservatory, in my south-facing conservatory. Really good because nothing much else grows in there. It's far too hot. It was my sister who, who's always loved house leeks. And I used to think, why? I couldn't see what you saw in them. But I love them now. There we go. Make sure he's got lots of soil around him. Right. Turn this around. Right, so I've got green and the reddish one. So I think I'll have another reddish one over here. Yeah. Funnily enough, he's much more sort of moist. Right, put him in there. Oh, he's very handsome. Put him in there. I must say, this is looking much better than I expected expected it to look right and then I've got two left so I've got this one which looks all sort of cobwebby he's quite fun I'll put him in there and if any of these leaves fall off just stick the leaf in like that and it'll probably root Him in there. Actually, take a few of these off. Put them in there. And what I'll have to do is I'll have to make sure that I keep this watered, these young ones, because even though they're like dry conditions, when they're new, when they're babies like this, you have to make sure that you keep them watered until they put out little roots of their own. It. right and I've got one left there which um, you know I'm gonna put him I'm gonna move them around there like that stick that in there they've all got a little stem on you just make sure that that goes into the soil because I know what will happen if I leave him in his pot in there, thinking I'll put him somewhere else, I'll never get round to doing it. Oops. And any little chicklets that have fallen off, you just pick them up and stick them in the soil 
like that and voila how easy was that i'm so pleased with this and then what i think i'll do with these is um I think I'll leave them here in the shade for a couple of days and then I'm going to put this at the front door because that is west facing and well sort of southwestly very sunny um, and that's what these are love so this is my Cotswold stone chippings and I'm just going to fill it all the gaps in actually I put some of the finer stuff around the little chiclets there that's it yeah that's looking better A mixture. I want all the soil covered up and it just means that um, the water, any water when it rains, which it does a lot here, um, will just drain through the chippings or the grit and these little house leeks won't be sitting, they won't have their leaves sitting in wet. I think it looks quite pretty with the mix of fine grit and Cotswold stone. Let's see, there's a leaf come off, so we'll just stick him in some soil. Give him a chance, he's got nothing to lose. And within a sort of a couple of weeks, this will look like it's been here for years. That's it. Right, we put a few more stones on, maybe around the edge. It just looks kind of sort of beachy, doesn't it? Quite fitting up here. Because we're just within walking distance of the beach here. But my garden is very much sort of cottage garden, come sort of woodland garden. It's very, um, it's got some a lot of very shady areas in it because of all the trees. Right. No, I think I'm going to stop fussing now. I think, I think that's great. So I'm going to go and get some water and give him a drink. And you can't overwater your newly moved and planted plants as long as the water can run off get out as long as it's free draining right so you might have been thinking well what you're going to do with this lovely little miniature iris here and the viola in the middle so um, I've found another terracotta pot because I do like my alpines in terracotta and that's the one that I took this one out of. Right, we're a bit squished for space because like I say, this is so heavy, can't move it. So we'll just have to work around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the iris in here and I'm going to put the viola in here. So I'm going to put um, a few bits of stone in the, in the bottom just like that 
so that hole doesn't get blocked and the water will just drain drain away that's it and then i'll fill these up and these will look lovely in my new greenhouse on a bench lovely right so i have to um i have to get this iris out there we go so take all of the excess off and he is just a he's just a lovely little miniature iris that's the little miniature rhizome he needs to be on the top of the soil to bake in the sun and these are all the roots so i'll take a bit of this soil back out of there just about that much put the roots in there so that can you see he's sort of standing proud and his roots are sort of they're not buried by soil so because i want him to lie on the top i'm going to keep a hold of the rhizome like that and then i'm going to backfill the soil so that it all fills in around those roots I've actually just um, done and edited a video where I've moved some beautiful huge white iris from my back garden and because I haven't got anywhere in mind to put them in this garden um, I've just put them in pots so I'll be uploading that one soon so that's the iris there that's the rhizome and then I'm going to fill the top of the pot with the grit leaving the rhizome proud like that there we go Is that one done now for this one I want that viola out the very middle there he is pull all the excess off Get rid of all this grass and so I'll stick him in. Stick him in this pot. Give him some fresh soil and a good drink. And keep the weeds at bay and top dress him. Right, so I've just seen something in there and that is a tree. <laughs> Get him out. There we go. When I get my secateurs, I'll just trim off these dead stems a bit there. 
give them both a nice drink until it runs out the bottom so that's it for today um i hope you found the video useful if not useful interesting um and if you've always fancied giving it a go just um they sell them all over the place semper vivens um get yourself a pack some nice gritty compost and just stick them in you've seen how quickly you can do it so um so yes I'll keep you updated and I hope you come back and uh, watch my subsequent videos. So until next time, bye bye, take care.